Welcome to Swap Skills Financial Markets videos showing you what you really need to know. In this module on understanding the client, we will look at interest rate risk in debt capital markets. We will also look at what to do with the cash you have raised. If you use the debt capital markets, you're borrowing money typically through a loan or a bond. What you can see here are some of the different financial instruments available to you. There are various borrowing alternatives for different uses, such as banks' acceptances for trade or leasing for equipment. Some are bought by retail investors, some by large institutions. Whatever the instrument used, the borrower will have an exposure to interest rates. For funding out to five years, you would typically use the bank markets. Since banks have the majority of their funding on a floating or variable rate, they will look for floating rate assets. So the company's most obvious risk is that of interest rates rising. If rates go up too high and their actual cash flows spent on servicing the debt, let alone repaying it, becomes too high, then they may breach a covenant. A covenant is a warning flag put into a loan by bankers that warns them if the borrower may be running into financial difficulty. These covenants look at the company's ability to raise cash quickly what we call liquidity ratios, and monitors how much debt the company is taking on relative to its equity or capital base. We call this a leverage ratio. A typical financial covenant would be the interest rate coverage ratio. This is where you look at the company's earnings before you've taken out interest costs, tax, depreciation and amortization, and compare it to the amount of actual interest expense they have to pay. You want to know the company can afford to pay this several times over, especially if rates rise. So if the borrower has $10 of interest expense, you might feel comfortable knowing that they have at least $40 of earnings to cover it. An interest rate swap can fix in some of their interest payments. This is where we look at what we call forward interest rates. These are mathematically generated numbers which reflect where the market sees rates heading. If you're worried about this, then what you can do is swap your interest expense onto a fixed rate basis. This means the bank will look after any of your floating rate payments and the borrower will pay them a fixed rate. It's called a swap simply because we're swapping or exchanging interest rate flows. The swap rate or fixed rate is roughly the average of where the market thinks floating rates will go. Well, what if you think rates will stay low but want to play safe and put some sort of protection in place. This is where the borrower can also use a cap, where for a non-refundable premium paid up front, they can benefit from low rates, but be covered by the bank whenever rates go above a certain level. We call this level the strike. In fact, some banks will insist upon some form of interest rate hedging or protection, especially where large amounts of debt are involved. So where does fixed rate debt come in? For example, bonds. Longer term investors, such as pension funds or insurance companies, normally offer money this way. They like nice, predictable cash flows. And if they have the cash and want a fixed rate, the borrower will do whatever they ask. The opportunity for the banker is therefore to help issue the bonds for a fee, then swap the issue from a fixed rate back to a floating rate. This simply means that the bank will make any fixed coupons or interest payments to the borrower who can pass them on to the lender. In return, the borrower will pay a floating rate of interest to the bank. Now you might even find that the lenders want their investment in another currency, say euros, but the borrower wants to end up with dollars. Not a problem. Their banks can enter into a so-called cross-currency swap where any foreign exchange risk and interest rate risk will also be taken care of. It's important to remember that the bank that wins the mandate to issue the bond will not necessarily get the right to do the swap. The swap may be given to any house bank or even be split among them. Now for the next step, and this is where banks literally leave money lying on the table. What is the borrower going to do with the cash they've just raised? Many banks work in silos they will pass on the raised capital without following the cash down the food chain, as it were. If you raise $500 million but only need $350 million, don't simply leave it on a short-term deposit earning minimal rates. Think about maybe placing some of it 
in a potentially higher yielding structured deposit. This brings us to the end of our podcast. Look at SwapSkills.com for other areas of interest in financial markets.